Thanks for coming out. I, uh, I'm glad to be back in Minneapolis telling jokes. I was on the road for a while doing some shows. I did a bar gig, and you're not from around here, South Dakota. <laughs> which wasn't particularly enjoyable. I opened by referring to them as North Dakota's power bottom, which they did not care for. <laughs> not even a little bit. You ever meet someone that was so pro-life they made you want to kill yourself? <laughs> Multiply that by 13 and you have South Dakota! The state motto of South Dakota is great places, great faces, and neither of those should be plural. So, glad to be back here. Hope you're doing well in your lives. I'm doing well in mine. Thanks to Tinder, I met a woman that's quite possibly the most attractive 39-year-old grandmother of all time, so... Uh, we dating. We dating. I'm dating a grandma. When you're dating with somebody, sometimes you fight over what to watch, what to listen to, preferences clash. The big one for us lately has been car radio. That's been our battle. Personally, I'm more of an NPR guy, because what's the point of driving if you can't be sad? <laughs> Whereas she's more of a gossip talk radio gal, which at first I couldn't stand at all. But now I'm slowly warming up to it because it turns out the more gossip talk radio you listen to, the more NPR becomes bearable. Because uh, if, if you don't know, NPR is essentially just 24-7 how screwed we are as a species on this planet. But then you listen to 10 seconds of gossip talk radio and you're like, ah, but maybe that's for the best though, actually, now that I... You know, because you listen to NPR and it's like, the latest test results show that North Korea's newest missile is capable of reaching the sense United States, killing untold millions. And you're like, oh my god, that's terrible. And you flip it over to gossip talk radio and it's like, yeah, he said that he got the chlamydia from a hotel wash rag, so... I mean, I don't know who to believe anymore. You're like, oh, just launch the fucking new. Can you do that for me? No, for me to just launch it? All right, cool, thanks, I appreciate that. Point it right in my head, give me a solid. <laughs> grandma, girlfriend, she's got daughters. She's gotta have kids to be a grandma. She's got kids, she's got a 21-year-old daughter. That's the one that has the kid that makes her a grandma. She's got her mom's looks, so of course all my dirtbag friends are like, Come on, Rob, set me up, it'll be perfect. You get the mom, I get the daughter. Like, no, we're not gonna double team a family, asshole. <laughs> this is reality, not red tube, you monster. Rain it in. <laughs> she also has a 19-year-old daughter. Her big thing is calling the two of us old and stay in, watch TV. Here's the thing, she's doing it right there with us. You guys are old. You're the 19-year-old watching Empire reruns with your mom and her Tinder boyfriend. You should be playing beer pong in a garage right now with some dude in a man bun that talks about libertarianism for three hours, not cock-blocking your mom that's probably living the life she's been hoping for for 23 years. Yeah, she's got daughters. These daughters are dating now. I gotta meet these guys. That's awkward. Because then they go to get ready. They go to talk. They go to do whatever they do, leaving just me and young me in the house. And I don't know what to say. I don't know how to threaten them. I don't know how to, like, ah, so what are your intentions with the daughter of the woman I'm sleeping with? They better be noble. And I hope you use protection, because the women in this family are hella fertile, if you do fool around. Yeah, and if you do knock her up, you better stick around, because if you leave, it becomes my responsibility, and I did not get in the grandma dating business to raise any new people. Okay, I'm not the stepdad, I'm the step-grandpa. Different gig. Completely. I don't raise anyone. I give them hard candy and tell them about the war. That's my job. That's all I have to do. That's my gig. She's very kinky, my grandma girlfriend. She's very kinky. She likes to send me sexy photos through the mail. And I told her that one time, like, oh, I love those photos you sent, honey. They're so hot. She's like, that's nothing, Robert. You should see the photos that my sister sends her boyfriend. Those things are practically pornographic. 
I was like, wait, you've seen the photos that your sister sends her boyfriend? She's like, yeah, sometimes she likes me to look at them first before she sends them out. What, guys don't do that? Uh, if my brother... randomly sent me a series of texts. It's like, hey bro, which of these filters best compliments my cock? I'd forward all of them to mom and be like, what the hell did you raise? I gotta be the favorite now, right? Look at how your youngest is seducing women. This kid's a monster. And what's with the shading? Dicks don't have cheekbones. Who was that for? I submit no one. What woman wants the hunger strike penis, mom? Probably none. How's dad doing? Good. You started asking, I got you. Gonna keep tabs on family. Yeah. Dating a grandma. It's going great. It's going great. She's divorced. She's divorced. She used to be married to a pastor, so clearly she has a thing for guys that exaggerate on stage. <laughs> Which is, uh, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. You know, it's just now she spends her time in comedy clubs instead of church. Well, I don't actually call it church. I call it Extreme Book Club. Which, <laughs> to me, seems a bit more fitting. Right? Like, imagine you signed up for a book club and you get there on day one and on the wall they have a statue of a dead Dumbledore and you're like, holy shit, these guys take this seriously. <laughs> and they sit you down, they're like, listen, you dirty muggle, Voldemort's real, so you better get right with Harry. And you're like, what the hell's going on right now? Can we just relax and maybe read some Sherlock Holmes or something? And they're like, fuck you, there is only Harry Potter. <laughs> And he's against gay marriage. You're like, that wasn't even in the books. What have you been reading? And they're like, that's blasphemy. You owe us 10 Hail Hermione's. And you're like, this is stupid. I'm only coming back on Harry's birthday. <laughs> Beliefs are weird. You can believe whatever you want. That's cool. That's fine. But what gets me are when people pretend to know what God wants, what God's political beliefs are. Because I get that too, I hear that. Like, well, Robert, God's against abortion. Robert, God is against people having their own children killed. Mm. I mean, I'm not a biblical scholar by any means, but uh, I seem to recall the Almighty making an appointment with Planned Saviorhood to have his own kid bumped off in the New Testament, so I don't... It's a little hypocritical. I mean, we're told Jesus had to die for our sins, but how do we know that's the truth, right? Maybe God just wasn't ready to be a heavenly father. And Rome was the only city that offered coverage for something that late term. Like, we don't 